Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Yeah. 2022 is soon coming to an end and it's time to sum up the year with some auction hammer prices yet again. Yeah, yeah. Um, in this video we will show you some interesting pieces recently sold by the three Swedish auction houses Bukowskis, Stockholms Auktionsverk and Uppsala Auktionskammare. It's interesting to note that, that this is to, supposed to be their quality auctions with just fine art objects. <laughs> and most of their objects are otherwise uh, sold online year round. Mm. And we really expect a significant difference between their ordinary auctions and these quality ones. Yeah. And must say Bukowski's really succeeded uh, with this this year. Uh, Stockholms Auktionsverk on the other hand had a few interesting pieces, of course. But most objects actually sold for hundreds rather than thousands. Yeah, that's yeah. not it. I uh, can't really understand why such objects were included in a fine art auction. Actually, no. Uh, no. They wanted quantity. Quantity over quality. <laughs> yeah. We will mention a lot of prices in this episode, of course. Uh, you should know that we have converted these from Swedish kronor mm. to US dollars. And uh, the sums were rounded off to make them easier to keep track of. With that said, let's get started. Yes. And first out is this uh, beautiful mm. Swedish grace mirror from the 1930s. It's made from painted wood by an unknown Swedish manufacturer. It was estimated at 1,940 to 2,420 US dollars, mm -hmm. but it was sold for 6,800 oh, US dollars. That's a lot. Yay. I chose to show you this simply because it really caught my eye mm -hmm. when I saw it. And I think it's just beautiful with the decoration on oh, the yeah, glass yeah. in that wavy pattern. More mirrors really should have decoration on the glass. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. Why just around it? It's <laughs> yeah. silly. I love objects from the Swedish grace period. It's kind of a Swedish version of the Art Deco. Hmm. And I really wish I'll be able to own some of these pieces in my life. <laughs> yeah. This mirror, for example, I would really love to have this in like an entryway. It's like full length and it's just beautiful. Yeah, it's it's a lovely mirror. You should have bought it for me. Yeah. Mm. And next out is another Swedish grace item, it actually. It's the um, it's a Swedish grace ceiling lamp mm. uh, by Lars Holmström, made from brass and steel, produced in the 20s or early 30s. Mm. Uh, it was estimated uh, at 1,940 to 2,910 US dollars, and it was sold for 6,320 dollars. Mm. People like the Swedish crazy. Yeah, they do. We do and uh, everyone does. No, don't say that. <laughs> nah, but this lamp is really amazing for several reasons. Um, I think the combination of brass and steel uh, is really cool. Yeah. And the geometric pattern in front of the glass gives it the perfect Art Deco look. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's super pretty. Um, it's without doubt, I, I would say, one of the best lamps of the Swedish grace era. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's lovely and it's large. That too. Like the mirror. Yeah. <laughs> and next one is also from that period. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Anna Petrus and Esther Eriksson vase, Profilvasen mm -hmm. or Profile Vase. Yeah. It's a special lidded version with cut glass produced by Firma Svensk 10 in 1972, but mm. obviously designed way earlier than that. Ah, uh, yeah. It was also estimated at 1940 to 2420 US dollars mm. and it was sold for 5350 mm. and uh, this vase is probably also from the Swedish Grace period and uh, I just love the woman's <laughs> face and especially the hair I, yeah, I yeah. love hair <laughs> and the glass top is just a beautiful complement to the shapes mm. of the bottom I just friggin love it yeah. uh, but I don't get why a vase should need a lid no. Isn't it? A lid. They call it, it is a vase. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's just strange. It is. But it's a great looking and it's super more pretty. more of a sculpture, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, sh I wouldn't yeah. use it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but it's super pretty. Yeah. 
And next out is another piece by Firma Svensk 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the Josef Frank Cabinet Apskåpet or the Monkey Cabinet. Uh, it's model 1140. It's a rare cabinet covered in prints of different monkeys. Uh, it was produced approximately 1941. Mm. Uh, and it was estimated at 194,000 and 242,000 dollars. So it's a lot of money, mm-hmm. but it was sold for 360,000. So uh, this was the most expensive piece we were talking about today. And cabinets by Josef Frank have skyrocketed in, in the recent years, especially the ones covered in different prints or maps. Mm. Um, and this one is really unique. Monkeys are obviously rarely used uh, when decorating Scandinavian furniture. Mm-hmm. And the price is also definitely worth uh, mentioning. The estimate was high, but the final uh, price more than 100,000 higher. Mm-hmm. And it will be interesting to see if prices on Josef Frank cabinets will keep on rising. Yeah. And I really think they will. Yeah. yeah. There's not that many. No, not that many. And they are... Uh, Attractive for international, rich international buyers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you have to say rich. Yeah. Next up is a carpet mm. from Barbro Nilsson called Bankrabatten Grön. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which literally means, translates to, bank flower bed green. So uh, I guess mm-hmm. it was made for a bank, but I don't know. No, no. But that is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's made from a knotted pile. Yeah. I think. Maybe. And it's very large. It's 440 uh, times 300 mm. uh, centimeters, not meters. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. And it is produced by AB Mattamos Fjetterström, mm. the very famous yeah. rapid business. The estimate was 19,400 to 24,200, mm. and it was sold for 46,700. Yeah. These auctions always include lots and lots of carpets from the same famous female artist, Marta Mås Fjetteström, yeah. and this Barbro Nilsson, for mm. example. Mm. And this one is not particularly the prettiest one I've seen, uh, but it was the most mm. expensive from these auctions, yeah, yeah. so that's <laughs> that's why it's here. Yeah, It's also very large, so that could be the reason. Yeah, probably. It's hard to find such large uh, carpets yeah. on the second-hand market, yeah. Up close, I think it's kind of cute with the small flowers, mm-hmm. but from afar, it kind of looks gray. Yeah, the pattern is almost too small. Yeah, it is. It should be God. like small, uh, like larger flowers. Yeah, uh, I think so too, because it, it's really just a mess of gray. So it's not that pretty, but it's really expensive. Yeah, it looks like pixels. <laughs> it does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but next out is, uh, is a, a piece of Danish design here. It's uh, Helge Westergaard Jensen. A set of six chairs produced by cabinet maker uh, Thyssen Nielsen uh, in Denmark in 1954. An estimate for these six chairs uh, was 6,780 to 8,720 dollars. And they were sold for $6,300. The first one sold for less than the estimate. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. The- And these chairs really look spectacular, I think. I can't believe they're comfortable, though. (laughs) The the backrest seems way too low, and they also look quite fragile. Um, But, yeah, who cares about such things? (laughs) The shape is fantastic, it's futuristic, and almost looks like some kind of strange insect, I think. (laughs) Kind of. And the color combination is also perfect. Yeah. Yeah, they are super pretty. Next up is a uh, Lars Håkansson Sterling Silver coffee mm. pod produced in 1982, so quite late. Yeah. Estimated at 1,940 to 2,910 and sold for 3,700. And I didn't think I'd include a coffee pod in this <laughs> no, episode, no. but it's too cool not oh. to show you. I've never seen a handle like this ever. It's a full circle. And the combination with the dark wood and the silver is just super pretty. Yeah. It doesn't look so practical, though. It looks also very small. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It's like two How cups. Much, uh... I, yeah. But uh, super, super pretty. So that's why it's included. Not how you can use it. I don't care about that. No. 
And next up is a lamp. It's Harald Notini Table Lamp Model uh, 15582, produced by Arvid Bölmarks Lampfabrik in the 1950s. Mm. Uh, estimated to 4360 to 4850 dollars. That's and a lot. It, yeah, but it was sold for $8,700, so mm. even more. Yeah. Um, and lamps by Notini are sold once in a while at auction, but I've never seen this model before. Uh, the foot is uh, kind of basic, uh, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah, but the asymmetrical lampshade, that's the interesting part. And it looks expensive, and yeah, it is expensive. <laughs> it knew it was <laughs> yeah. supposed to be. Yeah. Next piece is very strange, according <laughs> to me. It's a uh, Gustav Fjästad sculpted Art Nouveau carved mm. pine stabbestol produced in the Swedish province of Värmland mm. in 1903. Yeah. So it's a long time ago. Yeah. The estimate was 7,270 to 9,690. And it was sold <laughs> for as much as 42,800. Oh, yeah. And this chair, it is fascinating to me because it is carved from <laughs> one large piece of wood. Yeah. And that is a lot of work. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Must be super difficult to do. And it is kind of beautiful, but I don't really want one myself. No. But apparently many others did because it was sold for so much more than the estimate. Yeah, it's it's a strange and spectacular looking piece at, the at same least. Time, yeah, yes, yes. yeah. And another chair, um, it's by Bertil V. Beerman. Uh, it's called model two three three, and it was a part of a series called Presence. And it's uh, it was produced by the Swedish company AB Engens Fabriker in uh, the 1950s. Uh, estimate was 1,160 to 1,450 US dollars, and this was sold for 2,300. And this is actually one of my absolute favorites among Swedish shares. It's uh, as much of a sculpture as it is of a piece of furniture. Yeah. And uh, it's actually designed by Beermann already in 1956, uh, when he was a young student at the School of Arts and Crafts in Gothenburg. And I haven't seen many of these sold at auction, and the price was actually surprisingly low. Yeah. I think it's leather upholstery and it's oh. ex ex exclusive It actually version. looks comfortable too. Yeah, I think it is. And uh, Even to, though it's a bit low. Yeah, a bit low. He was accused, actually it's uh, funny you mentioned, because he was accused back in the days to produce way too low shares. <laughs> no, old people yeah. couldn't sit in them. <laughs> Next is another carpet, but... This time, the most beautiful one. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> it's by Marianne Richter. Uh, it's called Granen Violet, or Spruce Violet. Yeah. It's a tapestry weave, uh, and it is not very large. No. Also by AB MMF, Marta Mos Fjetterström. Yeah. Designed in 1949. The estimate was 2,910 to 3,880, and it was sold for 2,910. Yeah. And this is my favorite of all the carpets mm. I saw on these auctions. So it's not really expensive or super exciting pattern, but purple is my all-time favorite <laughs> color. So I'm really drawn to this. Yeah. Uh, I love all the shades of purple and the geometric shapes. I think it's just beautiful. Yeah. I wish I'd seen it and maybe... I would have bought it. Yeah, mm. but did they picture it upside down at the auction? Yeah, cause because the spruce should be... should be like. Ah, yeah, it should be probably. like a tree, not yeah. a tree, not like. A... I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think you're perhaps right. they did. <laughs> perhaps it's so beautiful. Yeah. So many shades of purple. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. And now a large ceiling lamp attributed to the company of Hans Agne Jakobsson in Markaryd, Sweden, and produced in the sometime in the 1950s. Uh, estimate was 2420 to 2910 dollars and it was sold for 14000 and it's obviously spectacular looking and would look amazing over a large mid-century dining table or mm. something mm. 
Um, it's attributed to Hans Agne Jakobsson, but it doesn't really look like a lamp by Hans Agne. I'm not sure. Uh, perhaps it? it is, perhaps it's not. Uh, it's something it somewhat w- does. Yeah, yeah, it's something with the shades, and I'm, I'm not really sure. And it's high quality wood that looks more like some. No, I'm not sure, but no. perhaps it is, perhaps it's not. But uh, 14,000, however, is possibly a bit too much for an identified lamp. Yeah. But yeah. not for people with a lot of money. No, of course. I <laughs> forget that. <laughs> Next up is a serving trolley from mm. a designer called Stig Lundgren. Executed by the artist himself while studying at the Swedish Art School of Konstfack in Stockholm between 1947 and 51. It's made from walnut with a glass top uh, and a loose rattan basket. Mm. Uh, it is it's kind of strange looking and I don't particularly like it. No. It was estimated at 970, 970 yeah. to 1160, but it was sold for 12,200. Yes. And this piece I mainly chose for two very different reasons. Yeah. The first one, the artist's last name is the same as mine, and mm. it's not a very common last name. So I'm very curious about this person. <laughs> yeah. Number two is, of course, the price. Mm. It seems to have caught many people's interest interest because it was sold for so much more (laughs) than the estimated price. And I, of course, it's pretty, but it looks kind of weird with the basket. Yeah, the basket, I don't understand it. No. It looks like a seat. Looks like a baby <laughs> should be sitting there. Like, <laughs> yeah, underneath the glass. It is <laughs> kind of weird, but also pretty. Without the basket. Yeah, without mm. the basket, it would be And that better. is loose, so you can just... <laughs> <laughs> throw it away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now a famous piece, <laughs> uh, the Spanish chair by Börje Mogensen, made from solid oak and leather by the Danish cabinet maker Erhard Rasmussen. It was designed in 1958, and this very chair was one of only three originals exhibited at the Copenhagen Cabinet Makers Guild exhibition in 1958. Estimate was 9,700 to 12,200 dollars, and it was sold for 12,200. Mm. And Spanish shares are easy to find on the secondhand market, but this is one of the original produced for the exhibition, and that's astonishing, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, but is it worth uh, paying so much extra money for? Well. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, just think about it. Like Mogensen actually sat in this chair, yeah. carried it around, handling it at the exhibition in Copenhagen and all that. So it's a piece of history yeah. and it's a great chair. Of course it's worth it. Yeah, it is. Next is a ceiling lamp made mm. from sterling silver mm. by uh, Swedish designer Mats Teselius, produced by VA Bolin in mm. Stockholm in 2000, mm. actually. Uh, the estimate was 2,900 to 3,900, and it was sold for 3,600, so just in between. Yeah. Mats Tiselius is one of Sweden's most popular contemporary mm. designers. I've never seen this piece uh, no. before, and the shape is very basic, but yeah. the fact that it is really silver, all silver, I think that is very cool. Yeah, absolutely. So it's uh, it's uh, perhaps cool looking because it is so simple. Yeah, yeah, and silver. Yeah, and silver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. And now um, uh, the cabinet Paradiset or Paradise by Otto Schultz, uh, produced by Boet in the 1940s. The doors covered in green artificial leather with a decoration of pearl nailing. And the motif called Paradiset was designed by the Swedish artist Gunnar Erik Ström. And the estimate was between 4,900 and 5,800. And it was sold for 33,000. Mm. Um, and this is a really lovely cabinet, but it's a shame it's not covered in real leather. Uh, artif- Why? Yeah, but I mean, artif- Think about the cows. Yeah, but you have like shoes on and so... I mean, artificial materials tend to feel a bit cheap. Uh, and I love the doors, but the wooden frame is uh, a bit boring, I think. Yeah. Um, it's And uh, that's why, I mean, is it really worth uh, almost uh, or more than 30,000? I don't really think so. 
But an interesting anecdote, though, is that recently the Chicago-based auction house Wright sold a cabinet, said to be made by an unidentified Swedish manufacturer back in the 1940s, but their cabinet was hardly difficult to identify. The producer is a small Swedish company called uh, Reiners, um, yeah, but, but would say it's worth like a couple of hundred dollars or so. But someone had recently covered the doors with a paradisit pattern, probably in an attempt to make the buyers believe it was a cabinet by Schultz. And suddenly the low price cabinet was sold for almost uh, 30,000. So That's obviously shady. it's a good idea to buy a genuine uh, Schultz oh, cabinet for 30,000. That no, that was just a no, lousy that, that idea to shady. buy it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. extremely shady. Mm. Next one is a piece from Carl Malmsten. Mm. Uh, it's a rare modular sofa called Samspel, or Interaction, yeah. produced by AB Record in <laughs> Bolens, yeah. around where I'm from. Yeah. Designed in 1956. Estimate was 1,900 to 2,400, and it was sold for 5,800. Mm. And I don't like much from Carl Malmsten. Mm. Could be that I'm so tired of seeing his designs everywhere all the time. But this one is truly interesting to mm. look at. The shape is very unusual. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And to make it into this three-piece set is very an interesting choice. Yeah, and uh, it, it would be cool to have it like not uh, placed side by side, yeah. but uh, with some uh, distance but between them. But the little them. piece would be so lonely and weird. Yeah, it's just a little, little, little chair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But... It is very p pretty, actually. Yeah. And now Carl Hörvik and his triangular side table made for hyresgästernas möbelaffär uh, in Stockholm in 1930. What is that? That's like... Uh, um, the association for people living in apartments. I'm not sure what it is called in their in, their in furniture English. store. Yeah, their furniture oh, okay, store. <laughs> yeah, okay. strange. Mm -hmm. uh, but Carl, Her Carl Hervik is expensive, and the estimate was uh, between five thousand eight hundred and seven thousand eight hundred, mm. and it was sold for eighteen thousand nine hundred. Yeah. And this table is interesting just because it's so simple and purely functionalistic. It was exhibited at the leg legendary 1930 Stockholm exhibition, and that was the great breakthrough of uh, functionalism in uh, whole Scandinavia. Mm -hmm. And it's indeed simple. Some people might call it boring, but, but I love the combination of different geometric shapes. This round middle and uh, the triangular top and uh, this uh, square legs. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's quite nice. It looks like a child did it. Perhaps, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but furniture by Herbig are highly sought after by collectors, and I'm not surprised it was sold for almost nineteen nineteen thousand dollars. Well, you're not. No. Now the last piece, mm. this Axelina Jutdeck chair called Skoga, mm. which I think is a place. Yeah. Produced by Nordiska Kompaniet in the 1930s, it's made from solid pine wood with iron details. Mm. Uh, it has the original textile upholstery as well. Hmm. The estimate was 14,500 to 19,400, and it was sold for 50,400. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, we are both of us really tired of seeing all his pine wood furniture being sold at every other auction in Sweden all of the time. Hmm. But this chair is actually quite nice, is it? It's quite interesting, at least. If I had to choose one pine wood piece by Jut, I guess it would be this one. Yeah. Um, and it, as it happens, it was sold for very much money as well. Uh, not so unusual when it comes to accident, I Jut. No, not, not really. But uh, He's very expensive. He's very expensive. But he was very failed during his lifetime. Yeah, he so was. it's kind of nice that he is expensive now. But we prefer, obviously, his Swedish grace uh, pieces. Obvi. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, but this was all for today. Yeah. Hope you found uh, it interesting, and if you want to see more of these pieces, you can uh, check out the websites of these auction houses. Yeah. yeah, and some of our other videos as well. Of course. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. Thank you.